everyone. Happy Women's History Month. We are still going uh, on with the Supremes train. Y'all, it's like almost one in the morning, right? So this morning I got up late and I was like, oh, I need to record. So I was like, oh, I could do it at night. It's going to be real quiet. You know, nobody's up or nothing. As soon as I sit down here, I hear a bunch of silence. So, at least it's gone now. So, there's that. Um, I need to, I'm going to go on a slight tangent. I need to figure out how to edit and stuff because, you know, I could be putting some jazzy music in the background or something so I don't have to worry about if somebody's outside cutting the grass or if, uh, somebody mama yelling at them like my neighbor or something not that i hear them that much but you know there's a lot of things that go on my mom be upstairs blending like it's a lot that goes on i just heard sirens so it's a lot that can be going on um so yeah i'm gonna talk about well i'm also gonna say we haven't been in the corner in a while even though i'm not gonna make this a screen what is it the screenshot is that what it's called? Um, whatever it's called, the image that you put on your uh, video, it's not even gonna be me. It's gonna be the album cover, of course. So I'm gonna talk about the Supreme's very last album called Mary, Sherry, and Suze. Um, I just wanna say, I love the cover. They look so cute and um, I like that they gave it their names because it's just, I feel like that's like a cool final moment uh, for the um, Supremes. I just want to say uh, it was released in October 1976, but it did not have a specific date in October. Like I swear, I Googled it and I looked on Wikipedia and there was like no specific date. And now it's right. But yeah, there was no specific date. This was their 29th and their final album ever. Uh, it featured, I have a typo, of course. It featured the final lineup of The Supremes, which was composed of the original Supreme, Mary Wilson, and Latter-day members Sherry Payne and Suze, Suze Green. I had to look up how to say her name because I actually had to watch a video of her saying her name so that I could get it right. But I think that's a cute name, Suze. Um, the album... Oh, and then all three of them had leads on the album. So this is some background information. The album was a mixture of disco, dance tracks, and R&B ballads. Uh, Payne and Green mostly took over the dance tracks while Wilson performed the ballads. Uh, so Green, uh, Suze Green, she was a member from uh, 1976 to 1977. So she was on their last two albums, High Energy and Mary, Sherry, and Suze. And then Sherry Payne was a member from 1973 to 77. Uh, she replaced, she was with Cindy Songbird before with Mary Wilson. And then when Cindy Songbird left, they replaced her with Suze Green. Yeah. And so this album was released nine months before they disbanded. So that's a little background info. Um, so we're going to get into tracks. Just right off the bat. Oop, I'm scrolling the wrong thing. You're My Driving Wheel. That was a good opening song. It was very catchy, easy to sing along to. I love car metaphors when it comes to sexual slash love songs. So I love the metaphor of the song. So that was my jam. Um, all three sounded very well harmonized and sound great together. The music, the music is very time appropriate and I love the beat. And it reminded me of The Wiz again. You know, that's one of my favorite movies. Uh... And yeah, so that when they when I listen to some songs on Cream of the Crop too, I feel like it's a great opener for the album. Uh, so Sweet Dream Machine, it's a bit slower, but an interesting song. Uh, the introduction is a little long though. Um, they had a few of these. I'm gonna mention this later, but they have a few of these where it's like kind of a long intro, and I feel like that's a '70s thing because I mentioned it later about Barry White. If you ever listen to like a Barry, I forgot which album it was. Maybe I'll talk about that one video, but I have the album somewhere. But I swear, it was like the whole album. I loved that album. I'm not going to say I didn't like it. Maybe I'll revisit it at one point. 
But if you don't like long intros, it wouldn't be for you. And I feel like this album also would not be for you because there's a few songs with long intros. Um, it's very dreamy, no pun intended, lol, since it is called Sweet Dream Machine. Uh, an airy love song. Uh, this would be a good song to groove to while you're doing something else and keep your calm and focused. So, like, if you're cleaning or something, I felt like that's a good song to, you know, keep you focused. And I want to get enjoy the music, even though it's slower, it still has a unique touches and it's dynamic. Um, so, number three is Let Yourself Go. It was a very empowering song and fun to listen to. It would be, like, great to play at a 1970s themed party. LOL. Because I feel like it was it was really, like, if you think about the 70s, even though this was made, like, towards the end of the 70s, like, you would be like, yes, this is 100% quintessential 70s song. That's what I would say about that. Uh, they worked with Holland, Dozier Holland again, and they did a great job on the beats and writing. It was a very groovy track. Um, I hope I said Dozier right. I feel like I didn't. But they always do a good job producing for them. So the fourth song is Coming to My Life. It was led by Suze Green. Uh, like I said, the introduction for this one reminds me of Barry White, how it's like kind of a long introduction. Uh, which I did love his introductions. Um, like I said, if you're impatient, the same for you. I think it's an interesting twin from the 70s, which I talked about that. Because now we just want to get to the song and get out of there. Cause like, I feel like that's how people, that's how people do with streams now. They want you to, to be short as possible so you can just keep playing it and 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 playing it. And some of these songs on this album were six minutes long, so you gonna be listening. If you put this on repeat, you gonna be listening to this some of these songs for a long time. You know what I mean? Um. Yeah, the intro was at least one minute, which I feel like today in our time spans, we would cut that off. I mean, I'm fine, but we would definitely cut that off. I remember um, this is like random, but I have a remix album by Mariah Carey. And like some of the songs are 10 minutes long. Can you imagine her coming out with the remixes now with 10 minutes long? Album. It, album would be great because I love Mariah Carey. I think she always, for the most part, has great albums. Some albums I love more than others, of course. But would it be a streaming smash? I don't think so. But um, I didn't even notice that some of the songs on that album were that long until I like was laying in bed. This is back when you had a CD player, a Walkman, you know, the portable. Now everything's on the computer or your phone, mostly your phone, the portable Walkman. And I was laying in bed like, like, whoa, like, damn, I didn't realize these were this long, but yeah. So yeah, and this one was like six minutes long. Uh, Suze in lead was very angelic. I loved all the high notes she was hitting. She was incredible. Um, I never heard her sing before, so I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Not that I thought she was going to be bad, but I just, I didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? But she did. She was really good. Uh, beat is very funky again. Uh, the lyrics might need to be listened to a few times to remember them, but I do like them. If I can remember what they were saying. I didn't write any notes about the actual lyrics just mainly like the song uh they all sound good together again another dreamy airy song so i do want to say i think they re-released this in another collection so when i say this is number six i don't know what it was about albums back in the day especially the supremes when i was looking up the albums everything is like front side and a back side so if i say six through eight that would have been on the back so that would have been the b side but I'm sure it's been re-released and it's just in order now. Um, but yeah, number six is I Don't Want to Be Tied Down. Oh, whoops, I'm going, I'm skipping one. Let me go back to number five. Sirens again, here we go. Number five, we should be We should be closer together. So this was Mary Wilson on lead. Uh, she sounds good per usual. I liked her in the their first album, Meet the, Supreme, Meet the Supremes, when she was in lead. She was really good. Um, I'm happy she got some leads because she mentioned that in her book, Supreme Glamour, which I reviewed. 
If you haven't watched that, go check that out. It's like a few videos ago. Um, and then before Diana Ross got pushed to lead singer, they shared leads more. It's a very sensual love ballad, very relaxing and airy again. I feel like a lot of this album is very airy. It's very, I feel like it's good if you want to relax and kind of float around, you know what I mean? I do wish they had more hot new tracks after this one, which I was like literally listening to it and making this note. And I said, I'm still listening to it though. So maybe it will pick back up after this track. So this will be all, no, one through four would have been the first side, the A side. So five through, so okay, so I'm right. Five through eight is the B side. So we're on the B side now. But number six uh, is I don't want to be tied down, which I was ready to skip to this one. Because this one and um, You're My Driving Wheel, those are my favorites, okay? I'm just going to, spoiler alert, those are my two favorite songs from this album. Uh, so they knew what I was thinking because they picked it back up, lol. That's what my notes say. Uh, it's very upbeat again. And, uh, the lyrics were very modern. Basically, they were saying, like, I don't want to be tied down. I want to be free and then we could be together, basically. They want to live their own lives before they settle down. And I said, I think feminism was having another wave at this point. So that makes sense. More like... It's gonna be another tangent. That reminds me of um, when I was looking at the differences between the three A Star Is Born movies, where like the 1940s ones was kind of like, I don't know, a traditional, like big love story like back then. And then the 70s was like, you know, with this lay, this, this wave of, um, you know, new wave of feminism. So at the end of the movie, uh, the 70s version of A Star Is Born, she was more independent. She wanted to be have her own name, not her husband's name. So that reminded me of that too. Um, yeah, so I really like that song. And then number seven, You Are the Heart of Me, another Mary Wilson led ballad. Once again, very central. Um, I said she must have been really in love because she was singing. LOL. Uh, so it was like no matter who was in lead though. Uh, you believe whatever they're singing because they all put passion into their lead singing. And, um, so when I was on Wikipedia, of course, some of them, they did mention who was leading and some of them didn't. So if, um, Sherry Payne had led a song by herself, I'm sorry, I did not make a note of that. I didn't really look, uh, too much into it. Sorry about that. But yeah, I think all of them though, they did really good in their leads. Um, this one's a very rom romantic and sweet song. And she was moaning and I was not expecting the moaning and I was like, <laughs> uh, I did make a note of it. Um, another one to play at a 70s uh, party for sure. And it wasn't like weird moaning. It was, it was nice. I don't know how you could say moaning is nice, but you know what I mean. So the last song was Love, I Never Knew You Could Feel So Good. Once again, it's upbeat. Uh, Suze Lisa's song again, and she once again is great in lead vocals. I think the song ties up the album very well because it started off in, on an upbeat song and ends with one as well. And uh, another, I feel like this whole album will be great for a 70s party. Just play it the whole way through. And then play Barry White and like uh, Dawn of Summer, whoever else. But you gotta keep this album. You gotta have this album though. So I'm gonna tell you my overall opinion. I really enjoyed this album. I will say the middle of it was a bit boring because the beats were very similar and the style of lyrics was too. Um, I wish they had more upbeat songs like You're My Driving Wheel and uh, Don't Wanna Be Tied Down and Love I Never Knew I Could Feel So Good. I think it was a great last album for them though compared to the first, uh, which I know they had many lineup changes, so. Uh, I feel like I wanted to make a note about this and I forgot, but I know Sunny Songbird was in there. But now I'm trying to make, I, I wonder if, well, I guess Sherry Payne had always been there. Don't call me on that. I was supposed to look that up and I forgot. Sorry. So here we go. I like that they all got to sing lead. And I love when girl groups do that versus only having one lead singer uh, on every song. So I like that they split it up. I feel like that was really nice. Uh, 
I will give it a 7 out of 10. I still loved Cream of the Crop more, but it is still way better than Meet the Supremes. It's like in the middle. Meet the Supremes is down here. Cream of the Crop is up here. And then Mary, Sherry, and Suze is in the middle. So, well, it's pretty good. It got one less than Cream of the Crop. So, hey. Um, I did wish they had more upbeat songs. But overall, I think it was a great, uh, especially production-wise, and with the groups being able to showcase their vocal abilities. So those are my opinions overall on that. And y'all, I tried another format poem, like I did the diamond looking one last week. I tried to do a star looking one, which is kind of like a diamond looking one anyway. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste it into the, uh, into the description like last time, but these formats in Apple Notes, they don't mix very well. <laughs> I did have um, Microsoft Word on my phone, uh, but I was listening to this on my computer as I was making my notes because I was like, oh, this would be easier to be on the computer. And then I went into my phone and I messed up the format and I got back on here and I fixed it again before the video. So I'm gonna give like a good example uh, from the website that I use. It's called shadowpoetry.com and I'm gonna explain the format in one minute. So it's called Joseph Star. Uh, so it was created by Christina R. Jusa, Jusawame um, in 2007 in memory of her father who had passed away unfortunately. Um, it has no grass reading but it is written according to syllable counts. The syllables are one syllable, three syllable, five syllable, two seven syllable lines, five syllable line again, three syllable line, one syllable line. So it's kind of like reversed, except for the middle. She, I'm gonna like give the good example. I'm not gonna give the whole thing because she has like four parts to hers and uh, I didn't commit to that. Uh, but I'm gonna, read what I have I'm gonna paste it into the description but it's not gonna look nice as hers I might put it in word or something before and then just copy it and try to copy it back into my notes we'll see because my format is weird but I wrote two poems based off of I don't want to be tied down because that was my favorite like I said and uh, we'll start with that one it's called a ring don't mean that thing Let's name the poem. Ring doesn't mean that you can control me. It just means that we want everyone to know that you're that our love is real. But to you, it means that I'm only yours. So I really thought that I had something else in the beginning, y'all. I was trying to do a different format. I was trying to do like the other week where you have like the noun, the verb, but it just wasn't working out for what I wanted to say. So I had to switch up the formats. But I really think that goes great with the song because it's like, it's not saying she doesn't want to get married. She's just saying, not right now. Don't tell me that right now. I feel like that's pretty relatable. And then of course I did one inspired by Driving Wheel. And it's called Nighttime Driving. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Wheel, driving me, and same with your love. Rev me up so I can't resist it. When you want to ride me all night long and fulfill my desire that one pretty much uh, sums up that song too so yeah so next week I'm probably gonna just go ahead because it's like well yeah cause it's like weird because let me see the calendar yeah it's like ending from this history month like literally going right like the f April 1st is a Friday going right into poetry month so I think I'm just gonna start of poetry month next week so what i plan to do if you're still here watching the video hey thank you and i hope you enjoyed both of those poems i enjoyed writing them i thought that was a i thought this was i'm not i have no problem with i mean not no problem with syllables but i am very comfortable with syllable counts but verb now i had to look up so much stuff for those other videos even though i should definitely know what all those are but hey and living you learn 
But basically what I want to do for Poetry Month is uh, read four different poetry books. Two of them I, I've already read, so that should be easy to get through. And then the other two are going to be brand new books that I have not read. Now they might not be brand new as in I just got them. They might be brand new as in I had it for a while and I have not gotten past the first one. But one of them is brand new because I just bought it like a few weeks ago. It's by Rumi. I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all are having a good month, week. I know a lot of stuff is going on. There's a new variant of COVID, so that's that's not good. Uh, there is um, gas going all the way up. Uh, like the other day, I'm going to end the video soon. But the other day I was at Costco in the line. Luckily I was off, so that it wasn't like I was in a rush. But yeah, everyone I was who had the Costco membership was like three ninety three over here. We're all going. But yeah, so I will see you all next month for Poetry Month. Also on my TikTok, which I always, always link my username down here, down in the description. Follow me over there because I'm going to try. I'm not going to try. I'm going to do it. I'm going to record a poem every single day. It's not going to be a new poem because I'm going to take baby steps because it's going to be my first time trying to record every single day and post every single day. So they're going to be poems from last year. So I'm going to cheat a little. But yeah, I'll see you all next week.